Good morning and welcome to the Answers Yes podcast. Here we are on a beautiful Wednesday. And I am always impressed by the people that come across my path and the opportunities that I get to meet people and talk to them. And today is no exception to that. And I know I've got a good friend down there in San Clemente, Richard Hiraga, called me last night thinking it was Wednesday already, wondering where my show was at. So Richard, I know you're driving today. Here's your show. I've got a wonderful guest for you to listen to. And I want to take a second to thank all of our listeners and the comments I've gotten in the last couple of weeks. Everybody's been so gracious and kind, and I really appreciate you reaching out and letting us know what you think about the show. So let's jump right in, because I feel like today's one of those days where there's going to be a lot to say and a lot to hear and talk about, and this is probably going to be one of those guests that come back another day, because uh, I've had a couple opportunities to speak to him on the phone, and uh, I just realized there's a wealth of information here. So I'd like to introduce uh, Rod uh, to the line today. Rod, how are you this morning? I'm great, Jim. Thank you for having me. I'm just, I was just chuckling under my breath. You know, you, we've talked twice already in less than 24 hours and you're not sick of me. So that's a good sign. (laughs) No, I think we have too many things in common to be sick of each other. Uh, You know, I got to say, after I got off the phone with you yesterday, I dug into your website a little bit more to learn a little bit more about you. And I'm just absolutely blown away by the twists and turns in your career and I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to drag this thing out. I want to jump right into your background because all you had to say is you didn't go there because we were in the middle of a war and you had to go over here. So, uh, mm-hmm. f- for our listeners, can you give us some background? Uh, you know, I see that you were born in Baghdad, uh, Iraq, and I'm sure that there was a whole bunch yeah. of craziness to do with that. But tell us where you started and, and what and how you made it over here. Yeah, really quick. I was born in in, in Baghdad. Uh, my dad's a civil engineer, so we kind of traveled a little bit. We ended up in Abu Dhabi when there was nothing but uh, they were building literally the first airport and infrastructure bridge. We lived on a construction camp. Great experiences. Ended up in Kuwait from about 71. Uh, I was there until 81 when I graduated high school. Again, my dad being a, a, a construction engineer, steel and concrete. I used to laugh and say that, you know, when I was doing my homework, so I was on drop sites with real, my, I had real Tonka toys. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, the, and then I ended up, I ended up, uh, I was, I wasn't supposed to, I wanted to go follow in my father's footsteps and I was going to be a civil engineer and go to his alma mater in Lebanon, which was a, uh, it still is there a really great Jesuit university, uh, called American university of Beirut that, uh, is like the equivalent of Harvard in the Middle East. And I couldn't go because there was a war going on. So I am 16 years old. My mom is like, hell no, you're not going to the United States. You're going to be completely lost in the shuffle. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I end up going to, and it was very much a last minute decision because, you know, me, me, for those who know me, uh, I tend to lollygag on some things that, especially ones that I don't want to do. I mean, go figure like everybody else. Yeah. Uh, But the, uh, the, uh, I ended up making a decision to go to this particular university by happenstance because I needed a place to go. And I end up on the side of the mountain in Switzerland that uh, with a university of about 350 people, American university, and I'm doing a degree in economics, never an intended thing for me at all. And uh, I actually loved it. I loved the experience um, of being there. I, it was a microcosm of all kinds of personalities that you would encounter in your life uh-huh. under one roof. It was, it was almost like Big Brother with 300 people. Wow. And uh, for people who know that show. So the, the end of the result of that is I graduated. I come to California, same situation. I didn't apply for graduate school. And my parents are like, what the heck are you thinking? You need to apply for graduate school. Oh, okay. So I talked to one guy. He gets me into Cal State uh, Bakersfield because that, it was so late in the year to apply. It was like I needed a personal personal uh, vouching to get me into something. Yeah, sure. And I applied, to go to Cl- I applied to go to Claremont Graduate School, which is, I know, in your neck of the woods. And it's a great university uh, because my sister is going to Claremont, uh, McKenna, at the time. And I end up in Claremont and I get a, you know, I'm doing a master's degree in marketing. I get out of there and I have no work experience. Mm -hmm. So I'm competing with people that are basically, you know, I have sales experience from when they had a bicycle route, newspaper route. And uh, so what am I going to do now? And here comes my uh, very good friend of my father's and he's becoming a developer here and he's doing some uh, real estate development. So here I am back. So I leave Kuwait at 81. This is about maybe 87. Okay, five, six years later, I am now sitting on a job site, doing what I did when I was doing my homework for my, with my dad on the job site, getting paid. Uh, I have a blast. We end up in San Clemente because he's doing work here in uh, like late 80s. Uh-huh. And then the market, cra- market crashes. 
And the market crashes, the real estate market crashes, 1991. My mom is over here basically uh, visiting. And the poor lady gets stuck here because there's a Gulf War going on in Kuwait, the first Gulf War. Yeah. And my mom is at home with me. And I love, I love my mom very much. But, you know, 10 years of a young man basically not having his mom hovering over him kind of puts a damper into your social life. Yeah, a little bit. So, right? <laughs> just, just a touch. So I actually go out and get an air touch pager, put it on my way, say, Mom, I love you. You can reach me at any time. And um, what am I going to do with my life now that I've grown up? And so this thing comes into the mail. It says Interior Designers Institute Summer Certificate Program. Uh-huh. And I go, okay, that sounds good. Let me go do arts and crafts for 12 weeks, right? Yeah. And I literally drive up the coast. There was, no, <laughs> there was no toll road at the time. Drive up the coast, and I'm doing this thing for three years, uh, interior design. And I didn't plan to do it for three years. I was just there for the Summer Certificate Program, but I find something that I actually enjoy <clears throat> that's a route for expression of a, sort of a passion I didn't even really know I, I had. I knew I had a little, sort of a little artistic bent, but not to the point where I could do this. And I graduated in 94, and I've been doing interior design since 94. Had you asked me in 90, even 91, that I would be doing interior design, let alone doing it for a professional career for over almost 15 years, I would say you're nuts. And that was, that was the beginning of that sort of professional journey. So I end up in a roundabout way back to where I would have been doing if I was doing engineering yeah. on job sites, reviewing things with contractors, dealing with stuff like this. So it's funny how life is a circle within a circle, usually. Yeah, sure. Um, and then, and then that, that's what I've been doing for, for, uh, for you know what, like since 90, 94, literally. And it's taken me to the island of Mauritius. I've done projects in Dubai. I've done a large work on large projects. I've worked on small projects. I've worked for mom and pops who ended up being friends because basically we developed a, you know, a package for them or a space for them that they could generate a living out of and successfully do so. Uh, so there's a lot of rewards more than just the monetary that have come out of it in terms of relationships and sort of connections with people, you know, just goodwill and, and kind of leaving that positive uh, imprint. Yeah. Rod, I, you know, I think uh, it's important to, to take a pause here at this point in your life and, and talk a little bit about what it was like to come to the United States. I mean, look, we've got a lot of people coming here to the U.S., and I think it's one of the great parts about our country that we, you know, that we allow people to come in, get an education, and thrive in different careers and businesses. And I can't help but think right. about your mom, the statement you made about your mom. Heck no, you're not going to California because you're going to get lost in the shovel. But eventually you did wind mm-hmm. up here. Do you have any advice for people that, that are, are seeking to come over here and get an education and work? Because I, I think that you've lived it and now you're on the other end of that. Um, I, I'd love to share that with some of our listeners. Well, I, I would say this, uh, just again, to kind of in, 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 for, in the spirit of full disclosure, my, my uncle, uh, my, my dad is, is Palestinian. So we've been kind of displaced, if you will, uh, since 1948. And we, we basically have, have had family members scattered all over. My, my uncle came to the United States in 1965 to pursue a degree in medicine and ended up being a very renowned uh, kidney specialist in Chicago uh-huh. uh, until he retired. And so we've had people all over. There's an aspect of living in the Middle East, especially back in the 70s, where, you know, still today, I think anybody who can afford it, nobody summers in Kuwait, nobody stays in that heat in the, in the summer. So we've, I've had a little bit of a sort of an international, if you will, or nomad, nomadic, whichever way you want to phrase it. <laughs> but I, I, I really, I really, I really am very um, fortunate. I feel very fortunate to have had that kind of diverse background and exposure young. But uh-huh. it, it was, it wasn't hard to wish, hard to wish, or it wasn't like you know um, a result of any hardships per se. It, it was just the way it was. And so I've had exposure to west, if west, you know, we have a. We have a flat in the UK we've had for a very long time. Uh, for So I wasn't really unfamiliar. Now, the United States is still a very daunting thing because just the scale and the size of it. I mean, I, I said I went to a university of 300 people and then I ended up going to Cal State Bakersfield. If anybody knows what Cal State systems look like, I, I went from everybody knows your name yeah. to you're just a number. Yeah, sure. And And so that was an overwhelming thing, even at a later point in life. Uh, I think most people these days, especially with the glo- globalization of everything and sort of the proximity of everything that social media allows, I think a lot of people are familiar. People in the Middle East, even back in the 70s, we were very familiar. We were very, 
like attuned. Uh, I remember growing up and watching Happy Days in Kuwait, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and so there is sort of a Western Western flavor that we gravitate towards over there. We like to emulate things of that nature. Uh, most people that come here, I think the hardest thing for them would be the scale and the size of everything in terms of just the numbers mm-hmm. and the, the, where do you, how do you navigate? Okay. How do you, how do you find things, you know, as simple as where do I go to get a driving license? Where do I basically go to, you know, find information about uh, rapid transit system, uh, which is really, it's funny that you'd ask this question specifically, Jim, because a couple of years ago, I do a lot of nonprofit involvement. And a couple of years ago, I uh, helped found a, uh, an organization called the Arab American Civic Council in Anaheim, which uh-huh. was the real purpose was a was to help uh, develop volunteer opportunities for Arab American youth to engage in the community uh, and providing you know in, in a venue for them to provide civic service or you know participate in like a Caesar Chavez Day or Martin Luther King and so across across ethnic divides that unfortunately we have still today in the United States. Sure. Uh, it wasn't political. It wasn't party affiliated. It was purely sort of a, uh, an engagement and uh, opportunity, volunteer opportunity for young, young Arab Americans. Um, and one of the things that we did is a couple of years ago, funded by a, a, uh, a Unitarian church organization in the East Coast, we actually put together a refugee handbook because we had an influx of people that were coming in from Syria and so forth, escaping the atrocities over there. And they were facing exactly the situation, even more dire. It wasn't a choice that they were coming to the United States. They needed to escape and find a better life, Mm -hmm. but they were landing and not knowing where to go, what to do. And there was a, there was a need for a, for a manual, a handbook, a guide that people could basically use for the first 30, you know, so we had a program, we rolled out a program for about the first 30, 30 to 45 days of when people basically come here uh, as, as uh, you know, uh, refugees uh, to help them navigate. Mm. So the same thing applies, I think, in a diff- from a different manner for anybody who's coming in as a student, anybody who's coming in, uh, you know, as a, as a legal, as part of legal immigration or, you know, a green card situation. Uh, hey, it's, we, we, we're in a great country. Yeah. You know, I mean, opportunities, it, we're, 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 we're a perfect example right here where we're, you know, anything that you can imagine, anything you can dream, you can technically pursue, uh, where other parts of the world is a very close circle. Uh, Europe, not just the Middle East, I'm not picking on any particular Paris, it's, you know, it's very established. Here, we live in California. I mean, if you can envision it and you have the tenacity to pursue it, chances are you're going to end up somewhere. Maybe not where you think you're going to end up, but you're going to have some interesting outcome come out of it. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I love that you just said that because that's the whole purpose of this show is for people to say yes to those types of opportunities. And I think as a country, we can continue to have open arms for people that want to come over here and explore what's available to them. Because, you know, the, the you know there's a, a line in a saw in the world's your oyster, right? You know, and it really is here. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think you're, you know, you've shown that through your travels and, and uh, where you've come around. So thanks for taking that little are- diversion there. <laughs> No, no, absolutely. And, you know, thanks for asking the question. It does, it's not something that I get an opportunity sometimes to share. Uh, and I, I really didn't have a formulated answer for it, but it, you may, you have made me think and reflect back also on my own experience. You know, we are, we are a, um, we are always better for continuing to have conversations. We're always better when we're talking to each other versus at each other. And that's a human condition. I'm not even going to make, you know, make it a bordered kind of na- national conversation. Uh, we are also, I think, um, much richer for the richness of our tapestry and our diversity. And so I understand where we go through these cycles where we're resistant to stuff that we don't understand and we don't know. But you know what? There really isn't an excuse anymore for people to, to, to not know. Uh, it's as, it's as, information is as close as your fingertips. And I understand it's all across the board and you've got to filter some of it through and you can't count on you know, taking two minutes to basically be given a soundbite that you now basically build your whole life and, and values around. But the information is there. Yeah. And we as a human race, we as, we as a country, um, we're, we are better. We've always been better. We've always been richer for the diversity, for our immigrant population, for our people that, that are off on a tangent, people that are saying yes to things that normally 
would not be maybe